Hello students, welcome to our channel Learning Notebook. In today's video, we are going to do Force, Work and Energy chapter. We are going to discuss each and every concept related to these three topics. So make sure you watch the entire video. But before starting with this chapter, let me tell you that we have made videos on every chapter of class 4 science. We also have interesting quizzes on each chapter. You can find all of them on our channel Learning Notebook. Also, you can see a list of all such videos on our website. The link to our website is below in the description box. So, let's see what all topics we are going to cover today in this video. First, we will understand what is force. Then, we will learn effects of force, types of forces. Then, we will talk about what is work, what is energy. And then, in the end, we will learn about sources of energy. So, let's start and first understand what is force. To move anything, we either pull or push. So, this push or pull on an object is called force. For example, look at this picture. This monkey is pulling the cow. And what is pull? A pull is when we move the thing closer to us. So, this monkey is pulling the cow. That is, he is moving the cow closer to him. Then, look at this second monkey. It is pushing the cow. A push is when we move the thing away from us. So, this monkey is pushing the cow or moving the cow away from him. So, this is push and pull. And this push or pull on an object is called force. Let's see some more examples of force. Here, a horse is pulling a tonga. So, this is an example of force. Next example is, this man is pushing a car. That means, he is moving the car away from him. So, this is another example of force. Next example is, here someone is pushing a button. Or we can say, he is moving the button away from him. So, these were the examples of force. Now, does this mean that force always moves the object? Let's find out. The answer is, a force does not always move the object. For example, when we apply force on the wall or maybe on any other heavy object, it does not move. So, it means a force does not always move the object. Now, let's understand effects of force. Students, force affects the objects in many ways. First is, a force can stop a moving object. For instance, when you play football, you can stop the ball with the force of your leg. Second effect of force is, 
that it can move a stationary object. Like here, if this boy is kicking the ball, it starts moving due to effect of force. Next effect of force is a force can change the direction of a moving object. For example, a moving car or a bus changes its direction when we apply force on the steering wheel. And last effect of force is that it can change the shape of the object. Like when we make chapatis, the dough changes its shape on pressing. Or another example is of pottery making. The potter with the force of his hands makes utensils out of the clay. Also, when you press the balloon, which is full of air, it also changes its shape. So, all this is happening due to effect of force. So, students, we learnt various effects of force. Let's summarize them. A force can move and stop the object. It can change the direction as well as shape of the object. Now let's learn about types of forces. There are three types of forces. Magnetic force, gravitational force and frictional force. Let's understand them one by one. Before moving further, let me tell you that we have made videos on every chapter of class 3, class 4 and class 5 science. We also have interesting quizzes and worksheets on each chapter. So, I would recommend you to check out our channel Learning Notebook. Let's start with first type of force, magnetic force. The force applied by a magnet on an object is called magnetic force. For example, look here. When you bring magnet near these iron nut and bolts, the magnet attracts them. This is because magnet has a force called magnetic force. Now, next type of force is gravitational force. Another thing you must have noticed that whenever you throw anything up in the air, it always comes down. For example, when we throw a ball up, it comes down. Or if the fruit ripes, it falls down from the tree. This is due to the force which earth exerts on every object. So, this type of force is called gravitational force. So, by definition, our earth exerts force on every object and attracts the objects towards its center. This force is called gravitational force. If you still not have subscribed to our channel Learning Notebook, then do subscribe it and make sure to press the bell icon. Now, the last type of force is frictional force. When you push a book on the floor, 
it moves and then it gradually slows down and finally stops. In the same way, when we paddle a cycle, it moves and when we stop pedaling, it gradually stops. Students, why do you think they stop? This is because there is a force between object and the floor and this force slows down the object. This force is called frictional force. So students, the force that slows down the movement of objects on a surface is called the frictional force. So these were the three forces we learnt about in this chapter. Magnetic force, gravitational force and frictional force. Now let's learn about advantages and disadvantages of friction. First advantage of friction is that friction helps us to walk. Friction between our shoes and the floor stops us from slipping. Students, you must have noticed that we cannot easily walk on a wet floor. This is because there is less friction between our shoes and floor, due to which we sometimes fall as well. So, friction helps us to walk. Second advantage of friction is that friction between road and tires of vehicle stops it from skidding. Students, as you can see in this picture, we should drive slowly when it rains or snows Otherwise, the vehicle can skid. Now, next advantage of friction is that it helps in writing with pen, pencil or chalk. Students, you are able to write with your pen because of friction only. You cannot write easily on oily paper because there is very less friction between your pen and oily paper. Another advantage is that friction helps in erasing something off using eraser or cloth. So these were the advantages of friction. We also have a separate video on complete chapter of solids, liquids and gases for class 4. I am sure all your doubts related to this chapter would be resolved after watching this comprehensive video. You will find the link to this video here on the top and below in the description box. Now let's understand what is work. Students, look at these pictures. Here, this girl is reading a book and the boy is pushing the car. Here, according to science, the boy is doing the work but the girl is not doing any kind of work. Can you tell me why? This is because in science, work is said to be done only when the applied force changes the position of the object in the direction of applied force. So, in case of girl reading the book, there is 
no change in the position of the object but boy is applying force to move the car and therefore the position of the car is changing therefore here boy is said to be doing the work another example is when you move a table it moves in the direction of the applied force so this means work is being done here we are pushing the table and it is being moved in the direction where we are applying the force so here work is done students when we push a wall with all our mighty force then also the position of the wall does not change so we will say no work is done here in this case so now i am sure you have understood what do we mean by work in science now let's understand our next topic energy the ability to do work is called energy and energy is required to do simplest of tasks we need energy to carry out all the activities like lifting pushing playing breathing laughing or even for talking we need energy so basically we need energy to live students most of the energy we need to live comes from the food we eat however we also need energy to light our houses cook food drive cars to the factories and our computers etc so can you tell me where does this energy come from let's find out we are going to learn about sources of energy now so in this chapter we are going to learn four sources of energy sun wind water and fuels let's understand them first source of energy is sun the sun is the main source of energy on our planet earth and do you know the energy given out by sun is called as solar energy now let's learn how do we use this solar energy as energy source the energy from sun is utilized by plants to prepare their food do you know what this process is known as yes this process is known as photosynthesis next solar energy is also used in solar cookers and solar heaters for cooking and heating respectively and then solar energy is also used to produce electricity by using solar panels let me show you the solar panels so this is a plant where solar energy is used to produce electricity these are thousands of solar panels which are taking energy from sun and then producing electricity next source of energy is wind 
the energy which we get from wind that is moving air is called wind energy and where do we use this wind energy it is used to produce electricity or draw underground water with the help of windmills as you can see here these are the windmills wind energy is used to move fans of these windmills which in turn move the shaft of generator and produces electricity next source of energy is water the energy which we get from flowing water is called hydro energy and hydro energy is used in generating electricity in hydroelectrical power plants students here you can see a hydroelectric power plant and a dam energy of falling water from dam is used to move turbines of generator to produce electricity next energy source is fuels fuels are natural substances like coal petrol cooking gas and wood students there is lot of chemical energy stored in these fuels and energy is thus released when we burn them we can use this energy in many ways like to produce electricity to run our vehicles to cook food etc students this is coal when we burn it we get heat and light energy and this energy can be used to cook food to run trains to generate electricity and for many other purposes so now i am sure you have understood everything about force work and energy do watch my other videos and share my channel and my videos with your friends and family thanks for watching see you in the next video bye bye